Um, and I am headed off to the grocery store. I kind of had such a vision for this vlog and now waking up this morning to two mass shootings um, within a 24 hour period. It just feels so bizarre to like vlog and not acknowledge the fact um, of what has just happened. So I think we always say like thoughts and prayers, but then we repeat the cycle over and over again. It just I'm kind of at a loss for words. And it feels weird to go about this vlog like nothing has happened, but I feel like we go through the same cycle every single time. And yet, here we are again. And I'm just kind of reeling and thinking about what to do. But, um, yeah, we've got to figure this out. So, um, it's Sunday morning and I am going to try to normalize this vlog as much as possible because in some ways, I guess that's a great way to bring some sort of, I don't know, I don't know, but we are going to go about this vlog, but I'm sorry if I'm not my typical self, but we will, we will get through this, and I think what we can all start doing is, what we're doing isn't working, and what we're doing isn't changing, and here's the deal. People got to get in there and fight and actually do something because the talking isn't working. The moments of silence are not working. The thoughts and prayers are not working. We got to make a move. And I guess that's just what I'm thinking about. Um, I thought I'd go ahead and tell you guys a little story. I shared this over on Instagram and I just thought I would share it here as well. So, while I was at the grocery store, I was putting my groceries away, hopped in my car, and was about to leave, and a woman came up to my car, and it was clear that she was, like, distressed, and she said to me, um, I wound down my window, and she is going through a tough season of life and wanted to make dinner for her family, and I parked my car again. I asked her to wait outside at a table, and I went and bought her the groceries she would need to make dinner tonight for her family. I handed them to her. We had a little bit of a discussion. I hugged her, and as I was walking away, a woman must have overheard us, and she came up to me, and she was like, what if she was using you? And I was a little taken back by it, but I said to her, I was like, well, what if she wasn't? And then I couldn't let it go because I think sometimes those moments and those things that have been planted in our head are what stop us from doing really kind things for people. And I kept going and I said like, whatever she chooses or whatever her intentions are doesn't diminish um, for me the kindness that I expressed to her. And I would rather help her and end up being <laughs> wrong than not helping her at all. And I was like, we can choose to like, let that dictate or we can choose kindness and for me I'm going to choose kindness and so I'd encourage you my friends I think we hear it all the time of like helping someone um, they might not have the best intentions or they might be using you and I think what do you do you help them anyway and I think it's easy to choose not to help and use that as your excuse of why you haven't but just by giving and being kind, it doesn't just diminish the act. So I would just encourage you to think about that next time. I'm going to leave the recipe down below, but it's off of one of my favorite sites I've recently found called Amy's Healthy Baking. So in here I have a cup of instant oats, uh, three quarter cups of flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, and I'm going to add one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon to this as well and one eighth of a teaspoon of salt. Then I have two tablespoons of butter that I have melted. I'm going to add it in here. 
I'm letting it cool a little bit and then we're also going to add an egg that I've had sitting out so that it would be room temperature. So we're going to add this egg to that um, along with a couple other things. All right, let me get the cinnamon added to this and then we'll let this butter cool a little bit so it doesn't scramble my egg when I mix it up. To this butter, we're going to add a cup of pure maple syrup. Let me double check because a cup seems like a lot. Whoops, we already made a little bit of a mistake. It was supposed to be half a cup of maple syrup, but we're just gonna keep going with it. <laughs> oh, that was totally my bad, but we'll be okay. A splash of vanilla extract, the egg. All right, we're going to get those combined. I'm afraid now I have too much liquid because I added so much maple syrup but we're just gonna go with it, my friends. All right, that is all combined. It does look a little too runny, but we'll see what happens. Now we are going to just add our flour and oatmeal mixture to this and cinnamon. So once we get that combined, then we'll fold in the carrots. Totally sensing that it's way too runny. So I'm actually just going to up the recipe and add a little bit more oats and a little bit more flour. I'm gonna fold in my carrots. I'm just going to use an ice cream scoop and try to keep these as even as possible. It does say in the instructions that these will not spread a lot. So to actually like even like smash them down a bit with a spatula. So we'll see how many we get out of this batch. All right, we're gonna bake these for 11 to 12 minutes and see how they turn out. Alexa, set timer for 11 minutes. 11 minutes. So the cookies are almost done and on my way home from the grocery store, I stopped by Home Goods. And I'm really, really excited. Um, first of all, I found these really cute Ray Dunn folders. There are 12 of them for $5.99. That is so much cheaper than Target or anywhere else to buy them. And they say organize, save, and file. Thought those were great. Also found these little Halloween mugs that are just adorable. I'm a little bummed because I desperately want the Ray Dunn Halloween mug that says Hocus Pocus, but I cannot find it anywhere. Um, yeah, but I found these ones instead, but I really want to find the Hocus Pocus one. I actually texted a friend, I was like, if you see it, grab it for me. And then I think this excited me the most. I have used up almost all my jar candles and haven't bought candles um, because I've been so focused on using the ones I already had but they had two pumpkin candles that aren't bright orange. They're nice and white. They smell really good. This one's pumpkin spice and this is pumpkin and ode. Um, and I'm just gonna hold on to these because I'm so excited that there's a pumpkin candle that isn't orange. So these cookies should be perfectly done now. They look amazing. All right, so. They might have been able to go a little longer, but I'm just gonna let them cool as is because I don't want to overdo them. <laughs> so anyone who knows me knows that my planner piece is switching out planners all of the time. Um, and I think it's okay. Like some of us just like to mix it up. So right now I currently have probably three planners that I've written in an entire year worth of stuff because I write everything in that I know of for the year, which is nice because if you want to switch in and out of them, they're all the same standing things already written in there. But this one I got from Bando and I just think it's so cute. So I want to show you a little bit about it and then talk to you a little bit about how I go about planning. So it's just this bright yellow and it says you're exactly where you need to be. I added this Ruth Bader Ginsburg um, sticker. So when you open it up, 
First of all, I love that they share all the artists for the month, so they choose a different artist each month. And they have stickers in here. I probably won't pull them out just because I love how nice they look. I'll use them once the planner's over, this random coloring page. So you have like this beautiful at a glance calendar, then goals for each of the month that you can write in, holidays, the, and they give you like the most obscure, crazy holidays. So like National Donut Day is in here. Um, National Selfie Day, all of these fun, ridiculous holidays. Then you get into your monthly spread and each one the artist has done such a beautiful job. And then you go into your month and they have everything marked. There's some thought pages and each one like focuses on a different color, which I think is really, really interesting. And then you just have the same layout and it's I think 17 months total. It's longer than a normal planner, so I think it's 17 months. Um, it goes till December 2020, but it's just a really, really cool planner. I haven't had any bad luck with um, anything bleeding through. However, I've only been really using pens pencils and these Emily Lee pens. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about how I go about planning um, so you understand a little bit about what I do on a Sunday to plan for the week. When I plan for the week, I do a couple things. The first thing I do is I open up my computer that has my Outlook, all of my standing invites for work, for meetings, things like that. I go ahead and I filter all of those in for the week. So whatever they are, I put them in right in their time slot so I know exactly what is already filled based off of work. Then I close up my planner and I grab my notebook. In my notebook, I jot down what are all the things for myself that are really important for me this week that I wanna make sure I do. And I just generate a huge list. So it might be, I wanna definitely read six chapters of the book I'm currently doing. I wanna take two baths during the week to relax. I want to do some family walks. I want to do um, any other kind of self-care thing. And then also like tasks around the house. So like I want to uh, prep lunch. I want to do the grocery shopping, do the laundry. I make all of those lists. I usually T-chart those two things. So like self-care-y um, things that really bring me joy. And then more of like things I need to get done in the house to keep it running and clean and organized. Then I go through and I start plugging those into time slots and giving them all a moment. So if I'm going to take two baths this week to de-stress, I might look at my schedule and say like Tuesday at seven, Thursday at seven. And I put all of those things in as well. You will find when you start brain dumping the things that are really important to you and then going into your planner and finding time to put them in, you can start deciding like, oh, this is a day I can go to bed really early. This is a day I'm gonna stay up a little later to get X done. This is a morning I'm gonna wake up extra early to make sure I have time to do yoga or work out. And you'll find that you have enough time in the day. It's just that we never assign the things that like we love or need to do around our own homes into our schedule. And we basically just have like a workflow of things that we're doing for work. So that is my planning process every single week on Sundays. Filter in the things that you cannot change that are work obligations. Then brainstorm your list of self-care and your home items that you need to take care of. And then start plugging them in and find times for them. That is probably one of the best tips I have found through all of my years of planning is to make sure that you give everything a time because people who say there are not enough hours in the day, there actually are. You just actually have to use them appropriately. So that would be my tip. I would love to hear your tips for finding time to do it all and yeah i hope that's helpful it works for me all right my friends i am going to call this vlog done because i still need to get a workout in i need to think about dinner and i have some things that i just need to get ready for work tomorrow um i hope you liked it it was a little different to vlog today um but i think in the world in which we live this the way i end the vlog has never been needed anymore so take care of yourself take care of others and be kind Kindness is free. Give it to everyone. Until next time, bye-bye.